What is up, Brosners? We are beyond stoked to be entering year two of the Wild Times podcast. The show started during the pandemic as a way to hang with friends and just share some wild times. Now, after a year, we have hundreds of thousands of downloads, fans around the world, and an incredible amount of positive feedback. So we're going to listen to you. This year, we're going to give you more wild times. Starting in a couple weeks, we'll be launching a Patreon where you get an extra podcast every week, an extra podcast every week, and exclusive nature content. Have a voice in the direction of the show. And it's just a whole lot more shit that's going to come along with it. So be on the lookout for that Patreon link. Now, on with the show. We are back. I am back from a shoot. What is up, Brosners? It is myself, the broologist, Forrest Galante, one of your three wonderful hosts of the Wild Times podcast, episode 55. Joining me tonight, as always, Mr. Retep who I thought was a small Indian man until I met him in person. Um, the <laughs> professor, PhD in podcasts. What's up, Ritep? Hello, gentlemen. It's good to be back in the same virtual room. Forrest, you have been missed. Though I will say I did have a lot of fun with ventriloquist Will in the last podcast where his audio was all out of sync. I heard. Things will be better this time. Love you guys. Happy to be back. Cheers, mates. And the person that I thoroughly missed on my shoot, someone I haven't been on a shoot with out in a long time, Mr. Papa P, Patrick DeLuca, the producer. How are you, Patrick? Good, man. I saw some pics that you and uh, Josh, the uh, medic, medic. sent from the shoot uh, on Instagram. (laughs) I was like, fuck, man, (laughs) sitting here in my office doing post-production on a show. I'd way rather be out with you on a boat Tell us anything you can so that you don't get sued by your uh, network. Smart. Smart. How, how was the trip? Where were you? What were you doing? It was great, dude. Um, so it was all kind of came together in the in the ninth minute, which was pretty cool. It was a Shark Week shoot, mm-hmm. so Patrick will have a couple of them coming out this year, which is kind of yeah. fun. Um, and so what we did is we grabbed, you know, we, we went down the Baja Peninsula checking out all these different species of sharks, mm-hmm. and then kind of almost on a whim – grabbed a 115-foot liveaboard yacht, just our crew, jumped on it, and headed 400 miles offshore to the Reviajeros Islands. Um, (laughs) And then, yeah, hung out on these little islands. Not on, actually. You can't touch them, but around these little islands with manta rays, dolphins, sharks, whales, huge tuna, wahoo. I mean, it was just totally wild out there, just virgin territory. And um, it was beautiful, man. We had some fun... (laughs) Some fun shit. I don't know how much I can say. I almost wanted to share that. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to share it. WT, I'm sending you a video. Um, The guys, (laughs) so to be clear to all the Brosners, if you're listening to this, the guys have not seen this yet. Okay? So um, we're going to do a little video review. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready, baby. I was born ready. All I do is watch videos. Might take a second. So you're, you're not expecting this. That I'm sure of. No. Um, so we'll, we'll circle back when this comes through. Just so that we don't have any d- dead air, what kinds of sharks can you expect to see in Baja? I mean, I associate it with, you know, warm, warm waters. Um, I know it's a great place to see whale sharks. Um, mm-hmm. What other, like, what do you get? Uh, dangerous sharks down there? You get tigers there's, and bull sharks and there's, stuff? Yeah, I had a tiger. Uh, the cameras weren't rolling, unfortunately. So I'm in the water. I'm working with a piece of bait, trying to get all the sharks up and around. And I look up and I've drifted like 300 yards from the boat and I'm totally by myself. And uh, I see Johnny's like dink- dicking around on the back of the boat and he's like, Forrest, swim back. Let's go shoot this thing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you got it. And so I just, I like take the bait, put it by my side and start swimming back and just like start kicking hard along the surface. And I don't know what came over me, but halfway through that swim, I was like, I should look back. And I look back. And there's just an open mouth of a tiger shark right behind my fins. Now, it wasn't like cruising at me. It was just doing that tiger shark thing where it's like, I'm going to go investigate by nipping. And I was like, oh, shit, like dropped the bait and kicked it in the face and then like quickly swam back to the boat. Never saw the tiger shark again. It literally just came up at, to check me out. And then I panicked, it panicked, and, and we both disappeared. Um, <laughs> it got but, the bait, though, because you dropped it. It did, got yeah. Got what it, it wanted. And that's a good lesson on what not to do. But anyway, yeah. Seriously. So that we, we we had a bunch of cool um, a bunch of cool species of sharks, some rare ones, uh, some more dangerous ones like bull sharks and makos, 
Um, and just, yeah, just good water. But here's something I'm guessing you guys aren't expecting. So we're going to do, if you're listening on iTunes, we've got a live video review right now. This is a, this is how good I am with technology. I filmed this off of Mitch's laptop, so heads up on that. <laughs> but okay. um, Patrick and Ratep, see what you think of this. Okay. Okay. So right now I see a dune buggy. A still mm-hmm. frame of a dune buggy. Go ahead, play yep. it, Will. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Oh. Are you okay? John, are you okay? Yeah. Jesus crap. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> run, run it back one more time, typical. Will. Run it back one more time. It's a pretty good flip. <laughs> You oh my it god! Four seconds after you started. This. I, how do you? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> By the way, She's literally, such an asshole, dude. you didn't yeah. even get ten feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, in the video, we've been filming for a while, but um, yeah, in this clipped I'm version sure. of the video. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, this was, I'm going to blame <laughs> <laughs> slow motion dune buggy tip. Donk. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And of course, like it's a so classic, man. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. And you know, I'm too cool to wear seatbelts. So I fall into my producer's lap and, and you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your producer, Look man. He's guy. so, Look at he John is Randano. so, the sound guy yeah. is like, <laughs> 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 he is not happy. And uh, Mitchell's, Mitchell's red was in in the co-pilot's uh, lap there, and I landed on that and broke that. And yeah, no, nobody was what happy was, with me for so, this move. So the sound guy is a guy we've worked with a lot, who's currently literally wedged petite between the seats with his boom pole up his ass after Forrest flipped this. John Randano is like a total hippie. He's a cool dude. What was it, what did Super he do? Cool. Was he just like whoa? Exactly. That's it, dude. He's he's like my favorite person because he, like all sound guys, he's a man of very few words, and the words he says are not profound in any way. So he'll like, yeah. he'll flip a dune buggy and he'll be like, "I'm good," and that's dude. it. Like <laughs> that's he, it. he's he's about seven feet tall. Yeah, total hippie. Huge. We were filming something in Cuba a couple of years ago. And there was like a problem and like, th- yeah. th- like a bunch of cars had come and we were like going up to this like sacred site or whatever. Uh-huh. And I'm like I'm talking to the fixer who's like talking to these angry locals and the site was up on top of this hill. Uh-huh. And the guys like basically is like, OK, like they're saying like they're going to kill us if we go up there. So like we shouldn't go. And I look back and I just see John Randano sitting on a horse just halfway up the hill, just going up the hill <laughs> with his boom pole. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. he's like, Dude, he's he's super cool. I like that guy. But yeah, no, we we had fun, man. It's gonna be a cool show. I don't know if that little dune buggy crash is gonna make it because I look like a total dum dum. But that's why you Brosners get to check it out, and we're gonna be putting, you know, stuff like that on on our new Patreon, right? Yeah. Like this oh is yeah, thing. maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Ritep, tell us wait, what is for 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 those feeble-minded like myself who don't subscribe to anything because they're too cheap. What is Patreon? Patreon is basically a place where you're going to be able to go and get additional content from us. Uh, we're going to be doing more lives more uh, and, and more content. It's a couple bucks a month, whatever. There'll be a couple tiers, and you can basically just pitch in and kind of be part of the show with us. And, uh, you know, help us fucking make, produce, and, and, and distribute great content. Cool. And we're going to do some more fun stuff. Like, Patrick had an idea for, uh, for a little film review, right, Patrick? Yeah, we're going to be doing, like, you know, we'll review just, like, Instagram videos. We'll review episodes of Extinct or Alive and get drunk and sort of pause and comment and do behind-the-scenes commentary. Uh, all sorts of shit, um, which we're going to, th- I think, film the first one of those in my uh, in my backyard sometime in the next week or two. Yeah. Patreon's not live yet, but it will be coming soon, as soon as Retep gets it set up, because he's the only one who yep. knows how to do that. And yes. <laughs> it'll be fun. But I think most importantly, for people that like the show, you're going to get a bonus podcast every week, which is yeah, that's I, a lot of people time. have asked for. So. Yep. That's fun. Forrest, I, I wanted to have you weigh in on something while you were gone that uh, I saw, and I, would, oh, I really shit. wanted to save it. Got been a white claw. Got the claw. Um, all right. So it can be tricky when you find a carcass uh, 
to sequence DNA, right? When you Certainly. find some sort of fossil or something, it's very hard to pull usable DNA out of it, right? Yep, 100%. The older it is, the harder it is. What if I told you that scientists who recovered from a cave in Mexico, basically a coprolite, okay? So mm -hmm. a coprolite is sort of fossilized poop, which is often found, yep. and that's how we tell this animal I've was here. I've got some right here. So he's going to pull out a coprolite for people on right YouTube there. so you can see what it looks like. Here's some right here. You don't have to there go on you. Oh, I don't what know animal what is that, yeah. Forrest? Uh, I don't remember. I got it in Madagascar. Remember, Patrick, when we got all those fossils in Madagascar? And I was like, oh, poop. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a dinosaur coprolite that's pretty cool. Um, nice. But we also use them often to see where humans were, where ancient man traveled, what they ate, yep. stuff like that. Scientists in Mexico have used a broken apart coprolite to do a full DNA sequencing of an extinct species of bear that went extinct 16,000 years ago. What? That's so, crazy. Is it like eDNA or are they, are they scraping up dirt? How are they doing it? It's literally that they, it wasn't even a fully intact coprolite. <laughs> it was intermixed in the dirt. They scraped up the dirt, re were able to re retrieve enough of the shit to wow. do a full <laughs> DNA sequence of this bear. That's a man. To first think of what all, you might be able to use that for, right, in the future. Oh my God! So eDNA for anybody listening to this podcast is a new thing. It's been around maybe ten years now, and it seems to be getting it's 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 advancing at like the rate of the iPhone. Remember an iPhone ten years ago? Well, look at your iPhone now. I mean, it's that's what eDNA is doing, and eDNA stands for environmental DNA. We used it in Vietnam to get ever the first ever positive confirmation of a male raphidus in Dong Mo Lake, which was huge for the group we were with. Um, but what it is is you take something from the environment, In from my most familiarity is just with water, right? So in water, you have a huge body of water, but fish, turtles, whatever, they shed urine, they shed skin cells, and it just suspends in the water. So what you do is you take a sample of that water and you can take it and check it down into the parts per million and be like, hey, turns out this DNA happens to be in the water because it's shed its skin or it's peed or whatever. The fact that we're now able to do it, you know, from extinct animal poop in dirt spread out in a cave. I mean, science is so fucking cool. Like, how cool is that? That's amazing. And not to mention, like, fast forward another 20 or 30 years, we're going to be able to take that and arguably recreate these creatures if we so want to, which is just nuts. Like Legit. Uh, yeah, yeah, like scrape a hundred years from now, they'll be like, "I really want to bring back the Wild Times podcast, but they're all dead." <laughs> they can go, go find some of our poop in a landfill somewhere and bring us back. Yep, it's. Do you think it. they it's could? Legit. Do you think they could bring us back though, like tiny, tiny versions that they could keep like under yeah. glass? We already have to do it. So. Yeah, we've I, I imagine that it's... I've seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I, I feel like it's a Futurama scenario where we're just three talking heads in a glass jar of water. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, that's that's all we are on the, these screens anyway. So I think, you know, I think the <laughs> listenership would be good. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. Speaking that's so, of which... Wait, oh, sorry, okay, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I just wanted to talk about that bear thing for another moment because it's just, I mean, that is an incredible you know, genome sequencing thing. I mean, that that's huge. Like, that's that's got to be groundbreaking in the sense of, you know, I don't know DNA like I do, you know, physical biology, but that's got to be groundbreaking science that they're it doing is. that. Dude, yeah. it is. Like, here's an example. The oldest skeleton ever discovered of a human in all of North America mm -hmm. was this Eve of Naharon, right? She was discovered in a flooded cenote that used to yep. be dry. E um, even America, Lucy, and Africa, right? Those are the two old ones? Well, Lucy was a hominid, but not a homo sapien. Ah, uh, okay. Right? So, okay. so this Very is good. the oldest human remains ever found in North America. It's 13,700 years old, a completely intact skeleton. They were able to tell a lot about how she got down there. Even hmm. from her fully intact skeleton, they still aren't, have not been able to do a full DNA sequence. Interesting. Huh. Because they want to figure out if Eve was part of the Clovis people that crossed down from Siberia, right? Gotcha. Or, or whether yep. she was part of another group. They can't do a DNA sequence yet from her bones. So to think that you could actually do it from the poop is incredible. It's amazing. So yeah. would, would this be a, a short-faced bear? What, what do you, Did it say uh, what kind of bear see. they thought it was? There were more bear species back then, so I really don't know. Yeah, let me see if it was a short-faced bear. 
or cave bear. That was another species of bear that existed back then. And I think there are others I've never even heard of, but. Uh, they're just referring to it as upper paleolithic bears. So I don't know. Hmm. I actually don't. Unfortunately, it's funny. A lot of times when you read these articles, they leave out shit that's super important. The most interesting part of it. <laughs> Legit. Okay, sorry. Um, this, this, was, this was the short face bear. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's very cool. Um, yeah, well, that's cool. I wish science we could bring short face bears back. Sweet. Yeah, Dude, science we'll pull is sweet. Up a picture I wish I paid more attention bear. in school. Yeah, just think, Ritep. If you'd paid more attention to your biology <clears throat> teacher in school, you'd be where Patrick and I are instead of where you are with a I wall know. with two paintings. So I have no there. problem with my wall with two paintings. I am feeling great. I have a great life. I enjoy technology. You guys know nothing about technology. You can't use sure. Discord. You don't even know sure. what Patreon is. Correct. You know what bears are. And I thank you for that. I bears like my version of life. Beats. So there's Battle a short faced bear that Will just pulled up a uh, taxidermied specimen. So Look cool. at that fucking thing, man. It's like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of bears. Legit. It's just yeah. like a muscle-bound <laughs> really Hulk is. with a really yep. short, yeah. smushed face like a pug dog. I, I love it. I want one. I When I was a kid, and by kid I mean like a 17-year-old, I, I was... <laughs> <laughs> so when I first... No, when I first moved to America. A few years after I moved to the States, I was 15, 16, 17, something like that. I had this idea after watching a lot of old 90s movies that I was going to go out and find a black bear cub in the hills of California and train it to be my guard bear and it would live outside my room and maul anybody that wanted to come and get me. And I, I committed like a good three weeks of that year of my life to trying to track. And I found plenty of bears, but I couldn't three find Three years, any. three weeks. Sorry. No, no, three weeks. Sorry, yeah, did yeah, I say yeah. years? Yeah. No, no, I, I was mistaken. But. No, yeah, I committed like three weeks of my life to trying to actually go and catch a bear cub to train as, as my guard bear, <laughs> which is absolute <laughs> lunacy. Smart. And, you can, and if you're wondering why I wasn't popular in high school, you're, you're hearing why right now. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and uh, just never, never lined it up, thank God. <laughs> Well, I was I was uh, looking. Th sorry, are you still going on the bear uh, thing, or are you going to a new on, story? Dude. I was going to. Oh no! On. So I was going to say I was uh, looking through comments because sometimes we'll go on uh, YouTube and look at videos that are really popular of yours and like check out what people are saying. It's it's a favorite pastime of me. Okay. And uh, of mine. And uh, what what language are you speaking, sir? I, yeah, I'm it's sorry. A favorite pastime of me. <laughs> How old are you? It's a favorite pastime of mine to go onto YouTube and look at Forrest's really popular videos, check out the comments and see what the people are, are saying about him. And it was funny because somebody commented, one of the comments I read today was somebody that knew you in, uh, in high school and it was a Rogan clip and they were basically like, yeah, uh, he, one time he... He got bitten by a lizard in the ear, and he just came back with a lizard earring or some shit. Oh, yeah. And he's like, and he turned out basically how I would have expected him to turn out. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like, Pretty funny. Hey, Will, yeah. pull up the, uh, the video that Dakota Slack sent us. Uh, I think we, we really need to watch this. So Dakota Slack, thank you for your uh, DM on Instagram, says anything is possible in Florida. True. Here's the headline. Even, even jeans that are shorts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shorts. Dinosaur beat it. spotted. Dinosaur spotted running through Florida woman's backyard. <laughs> I don't know if I okay. believe it's a dinosaur, but let's take a look at the clip. Let's see. It's I've seen, seen it, this. and it is. It's so deaf a dinosaur. We're looking at black and so white what? infrared security. It's a security. security. It's a, yes. Yeah. Security it's footage. Mm -hmm. Go and then we're going to hit that play button. There it is. Oh, shit. Go Did back. you guys see what? it? I saw it? it. What was that? Play it again, Will. It's a fucking dinosaur, dude. What is that? I'm making it full screen. Hold on. This is hilarious. Play it again. There we go. And there what it is. What is that? It's what a velociraptor, dude. <laughs> Clearly. It looks like a velociraptor for those who are just listening. I feel like it's got to be some, some sort of bird. Is it a flamingo? Could a flamingo run like that? That looks pretty. What am I, I have no idea what I'm looking at. I'm it looks on the, like it has a I'm bucket on the on website right there's now. A, there's a clear tail, and then you can see feet, dude. I mean, this almost looks to be faked because it looks like a legit dinosaur. You can it's see it's moving them. quick too. 
Like well, some what? kind of, yeah. you're saying perhaps a bird, a lizard, or a dog dragging a leash? To me, it's clearly a, a very large bird. Do you think so? Well, it looks bipedal. It doesn't look like it's on four legs. It looks like it's on two legs. Yeah, it almost looks like a, a smaller version of like a, what's the bird in, in Australia? Uh, cassowary? Yeah, it almost looks like a smaller cassowary. Let's get Neil Watkins on here to confirm, because I'm pretty sure this is a thylacine. <laughs> yeah. Is that um, Neil Waters' uh, yeah, brother who's been remarried? Definitely what did I say? A thylacine. <laughs> Neil Watkins. Oh, but yeah. my bad. Okay, got I've it. got a theory. I'm watching it over and over and over on the website and not paying attention to you guys. I think that it's a dressed-up dog. Have you ever really? seen those, those, like, dog in a T-Rex costume where it's got the tail and it's got the little arms that flop in the front? The only reason I know this is because I dress my dog up every Halloween and Christmas <laughs> and Sunday. <laughs> I um, have seen those, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's so interesting. There's, yeah. There's a moment where you catch some eye shine. I do see that, and I don't know what that is. It almost looks like a cone or a collar. Or so. I don't know what I'm looking at. Probably, probably the device that's attaching the costume to the dog's body. That's kind of what it looks like, right? I, like the collar it looks, of it. I don't know. I see two legs clearly there. I do too, no, but the, that's why I'm saying yeah. I think it's the costume. I have no uh, idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just guessing because it looks <laughs> yeah, like the T-Rex costume that I have for my tiny dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> the tail, if we look at the way the tail is like, I don't, it's like not moving as it's going, which would be strange because the costume kind of accentuates those features when, when it like moves, it bounces. So, I mean, that's this pretty is interesting. The, the most fun cryptic video that I've seen in a long time, because every time I get sent this kind of a video, I'm like, God, what morons don't know that that's a blank. Right? <laughs> like, right. every time you see one of those, it's like, ugh, come on. Like, it's so clearly a bear, or it's so clearly a leopard, or whatever. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. I'm basing this <laughs> off of my own anecdotal observation of my dog in a T-Rex costume. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> right. But I will say this. I will say this. If there's one methed out state in, the, in, in America where dinosaurs would definitely come back because some weirdo in jorts is messing around with CRISPR... It's Florida, and that could be what we're seeing. <laughs> okay. I think that's what our official answer should be from the podcast team crew. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned dinosaurs, Forrest. On our last live podcast, I mentioned the theory that had been posited that a T-Rex was a scavenger. And yeah. a couple of the Brosners were very passionate, pointing out, uh, you know, other people have disproved that, you know. One legit scientist did come up with that theory. Other people said, we don't think so. And then news fresh, hot off the press about the T-Rex. Mm. Scientists in the UK saying that the T-Rex uh, hunted in packs. Hmm. Interesting. They were not sort of this king of the jungle that just kind of came through on their own solitary and did whatever they wanted. But they actually hunted in packs, which is fucking terrifying. It is terrifying, yeah. unless our prior theory that we once discussed, which is that they move at the pace of a snail, in which case it's, it's still not very scary. Um, True. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, what is, I, I haven't read this article. I'm pulling it up now. I'm curious what he's basing this on, because it's so, not like we find big mass grave sites of T-Rexes, right? Well, we find that, one that, here, one there. That's what it's based on. Is uh, It's actually a site in Utah where they did an hmm. excavation and found... Uh, essentially a mass grave of a group of dead T-Rex that they think all died around the same time. Oh, um, interesting. Well, that's, wow. so that's sort kind of the of basis goes of it. Exactly against what I just said. Um, <laughs> but you're, you're right up until this point, right? Right. Well, yeah, because my understanding was it's like one here and one there. And by the way, it's not like you find a pile of dead wolves. You know what I mean? Like when a wolf gets sick or dies, it starts. It's funny because Patrick's dog reflection, Luca, <laughs> yeah. just came in as I said the word wolf in the background. Um, yeah. But when you you know when a when a wolf gets sick, the pack tries to take care of it for a bit, and then it basically abandons it, and you find a single dead wolf, right? And right. I kind of imagine that like the T Rexes or any animal for that matter, are like okay, let's all lie down and die together. So even if it is a True. pack animal, you know, it's not like they're not they're not all dying together at the same time. So I. Yeah, I just kind of wonder what, you know, it's hard, it's hard to base that on, it's hard to base any behavior, I would say, on fossil remains. 
True. You got to get their poop. Is there any <laughs> reptile that hunts in packs that you know of? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's packs are like a weird word, but the short answer is yes. And the thing that first comes to mind for me is, did you guys see that incredible sequence from Planet Earth 2 with the the iguana and the racer oh, yeah. snakes in the Galapagos? Yeah. When yeah, you just yeah. see all the snakes mobbing together to try and get the single iguana as it cruises through. And it's like, it's not really like uniform pack hunting so much as it is like a, a free for all with a high density of predatory animals. And I think, you know, same thing with this guy in Utah. Again, I haven't read this article, so I'm probably about to spout nonsense. But what's to say there wasn't a dead brontosaurus right there that, you know, nine T-Rexes were feeding on at the same time. And then something happened, you know, a, a right. sinkhole or a meteorite or, or whatever. And then you could be like, oh, they hunted in packs because here are nine of them feeding on a brontosaurus. Well, what's to say they weren't scavengers, like you said last week, and they were all sitting here feeding together, right? If if 3, 000, 3 million years from now, scientists find a fossil site of a thousand dead vultures, right? They're going to be like, oh, all these predatory birds killed this this elephant together. These vultures were super scary, but the truth is, like, there was an elephant poisoned with cyanide, and a thousand vultures all died in a circle because they were eating the dead animal, right? You know, so right, it's like right. it's really hard to base behavior on fossil remains, in my opinion. But I'm also not a paleontologist. I, I did see something pretty interesting. I, I was on a boat very removed from pretty much everything. But, you know, when I'm out there, I come back and I usually have a gazillion Instagram messages. And I managed to check one of them from Rue Ari, which was a pretty good question. Very scientific. It says, question for you boys for the podcast. What is the biggest animal the three of you could take in a fight? <laughs> The three of us at once, huh? Three of us collectively fighting another animal. Well, I'm I think we'd get to into a, a land fight. animal because yes. yeah, indeed. I am not that useful in the water. You're not. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Ratep is either. I think he would sink like a rock. I'm a fantastic swimmer, like a fish. Well, let me think of a very big. I very would not want to fight animal. in water, though. That yeah. said, that'd be a nightmare, dude. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing: is every wild animal is so much tougher than anything domestic, like we are. You know, I, mean, uh, I think I know the savagery. answer to this, guys. All right, I think it? I know the answer to this. The three of us, at our best, would be able to take on an adult sloth. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all we could do. And it's only because it would come down to poop on the ground, and we would beat our chests like apes and, and hammer fist it, and we'd win barely because it couldn't escape in time. And that's it. Like, we're yeah. not very... We, n look, look, nobody on this podcast is making it into the NFL on size alone. All right. Like we're <laughs> now <laughs> we're, we're not going to win a lot of fights here, guys. I'm I'm going, you know, sloth. That's it. OK, we're so take a lot of deep scratches from that sloth in the process. No doubt. Yeah, no deep, doubt. I, I imagine scratches. I imagine Retep would actually be crying. But you and I, Patrick, would probably be OK. You know, sand fine. scratches. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you guys aren't uh, talking about our ability to use our three brains together to take down a big animal, perhaps by tripping it up with a rope and toppling it over like they did in Star Wars, mm. which I constantly talk about on the podcast. What about, <laughs> what about a giant panda? Dude, pandas are gnarly. I don't think I don't think you a bear, mate. A panda. By the way, I don't know if Will can find this. I saw the most hilarious video of a guy trading an apple for a baby panda from its parents yesterday. I don't know where that came from. Someone <laughs> sent it to me. It was hysterical. Um, so the guy hands them an apple and they just go here. Yeah, so there's like a panda in a zoo, and it's like cuddling its baby, and this guy sticks his arm in with an apple, and the panda like completely releases the baby and goes for the apple and is just so... Here it is. Will found it in five seconds like he always does. Watch this. I mean, it's just such... It, it's just like, pandas, By you're, the way, you're terrible look at that parents. cute baby panda. Good God. <laughs> Watch it how this <laughs> shakes out, though. Even the adult <laughs> is... It looks like a... It looks like a person wearing a furry costume. The yeah, it's panda. beyond adorable. <laughs> Uh-oh. How long is the version of the video that Will found? Oh, just pit, the, the mama just yeah no here it comes look mama's just giving it a nice cuddle I love you so much and then it's like oh this is a fair trade human I will take it <laughs> baby <laughs> removed <laughs> and then the zookeeper straight what? through the cage gone <laughs> I mean look at the, how fat the mama panda doesn't care at all not one no. fuck is given 
during Very this. food focused. Um, I could, I could my, understand. My guess it. is that the panda has learned that Apple means baby goes away for a little while and comes back unscathed. For sure. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. But I just think the video is so funny. It's, it's just like, ridiculous. oh, what an, what an adorable, loving mother. <laughs> she just gives up her baby for an apple. Um, have you. Uh, have you guys seen the, the video of the monkey? And, well, if you can find this while I'm talking about it, there's a monkey who sits on this guy's motorcycle. He comes back and discovers this monkey sitting there. And then the monkey starts, like, uh, like scratching and, and pissing on the dude's motorcycle seat. And then uh, he proceeds to get in, like, uh, like, a brawl with this fucking monkey. And uh, it's idea, you guys haven't sir. seen it? No, no I have it's, not, no. It's so goddamn funny. I don't think the the monkey. Yeah, here it is. Check this out. If you could play this one, will yeah. So there's a monkey just sitting on this dude's That's motorcycle. That's a large monkey. He's he the monkey's urinating on the motorcycle and and tearing up the seat. And, and the guy is just like you can you can skip a little bit forward if you want. But the guy's literally oh here he goes. He just goes over there. And he throws a shoe at the monkey. Oh, great. Yeah, now, throws a oh, shoot. Dude, the monkey comes straight at him. It's not now. They're just <laughs> throwing on the ground. He's literally throwing bolos at this monkey. The monkey is like, like in the fight, kicks this monkey. The monkey's still idiot. fighting him. By the way, oh, yeah. Uh, throws the monkey dirt was on him. done, and then he kicked it in the head. Fucking dickhead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, the guy's guy a total fucking it. asshole. I this think with audio, totally it's. it's it. It's it's funnier with audio, but uh, but so yeah, I mean, I think the monkey's okay at the end. But so what's the monkey was just like claiming that motorcycle as his own, yeah? He's like, this is mine. This is in my sure, house. Sure, sure. I I've seen baboons do this a lot, and I didn't pull the video up full size because I couldn't tell if that was a Southern African baboon or not. But they they just get possessive. They're like, this is mine, and then you're like, no, no, I'll take that back. And they're like, I'm gonna rock your world. Where where I used to. <laughs> Where Yikes. I grew up, um, we so we used to go houseboating every summer on Lake Kariba, which at one time was the largest man-made lake in the world. It's it's very similar to like houseboating on Lake Powell in the U.S. You know, like every everybody goes there in the summer and you get a houseboat and like you see your friends and it's super fun. And uh, we used to do it every summer, except this is houseboating in Africa. So you like dodge hippos and there's crocodiles everywhere and catch monster fish. And one of the things that always <laughs> used to happen is you'd pull into this area that everybody used to go to like party basically pull the houseboats in and the baboons would come aboard and like just rock shit. I mean, just destroy everything in their path. <laughs> and they were looking for food. So if you left anything open or unlocked, they'd come in and take all your food. And I remember coming back, I was like 14 years old in Zimbabwe. Everybody starts drinking at like age six. So I was already <laughs> drunk on like one and a half <laughs> years at age 14. Oh yeah. No, we have a problem. And um, I come back and there's a baboon with a loaf of bread on the upper deck of our houseboat. And I'm like, get out of here, baboon. Like, get out of here. And this baboon looks at me and is like, you're fucking dead. And this thing just comes shooting at me. And this is at Lake Kariba, full of crocodiles, with the bag of bread in its hand, baring its teeth. And I dive off the second story of the high of, uh, dive. I I belly flopped off of the second yeah. story of the houseboat into like two and a half feet of water where the boat oh. was moored up against the shore. And the monk and the baboons up there going, ah, what are you? like screeching at me, like trying to get me. And, and this is it's loaded with crocodiles in this lake. And then I'm like scrambling out of the lake at top speed back onto the houseboat where the angry baboon is. And the whole thing, like there was like 15 people watching. Everybody was laughing hysterically at me. It was it was quite a to do. Classic, classic so like forest adults, story. I feel like the drunk adults were just there, being like, "Oh, forest." I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, there. that's pretty accurate. No, yeah, they're just like, "Oh, that forest. fucking idiot." I was always doing stupid stuff, so they were used to it. But yeah, no, literally you? everybody no. was just screeching in laughter. Um, so, on the topic of bizarre animals doing bizarre things, did you guys see the story that came out of Puerto Rico about the escaped Barbary sheep? No. Uh, no. Uh -uh. Oh, I, I, I love this. I think I think the story's all in Spanish, so it's kind of hard to like dig up. But a Barbary sheep is like um, it's like a Rocky Mountain sheep, you know, like big horns, big, big goat thing from the Rocky Mountains in North America. Right. So there's a zoo in Puerto Rico that has them. Now, when you think of a wild sheep, you don't think of an animal that's hard to catch. However, <laughs> the zoo in Puerto Rico had one escape and it's been on the run 
with like a bunch of biologists and like DNR, like, you know, Department of Natural Resources people chasing it around the island for over a week. So there's just this one <laughs> giant bighorn sheep running around the island of Puerto Rico with like a mob of biologists and, and like zookeepers chasing it. And they have not to this day been able to catch it, which I think is just hysterical. <laughs> is that because oh, it, can, it, it can it can climb so well? Yeah, well, you'll see. I mean, I haven't seen this video, but I'm sure he's going up and down the rocks. He's running around like a lush jungle. This is a Rocky Mountain yeah. animal running around this lush jungle <laughs> getting chased by scientists. I don't know. I just think it, the whole thing's really, really funny. I mean, they have some bi- – Barbary sheep have some big horns on them. Oh, yeah. I would not want to get rammed by a pissed off one. <laughs> you know, I think he's probably scared as hell getting chased around. But um, so, what are they? What are they going to do with it when they catch it? They're just going to like put it in a zoo, or are they going to try and put it back yeah. where it came from? They're going to no, back in the zoo. Where, where yeah, it it'll go back from. in the zoo. Yeah. <clears throat> what? So, okay, let's say that you had this Barbary sheep in a confined area, and you had to grab it. How would you get it? Um, by the horns. <laughs> you know, grab grab the bull by the horns. Um, it. it yeah, I don't know. It would be tough. It would definitely try and ram you. I think you'd want a net or something like that. I, uh, you know, I don't really net. know. Yeah. yeah. But I just <laughs> think it's super funny that he's running around causing trouble. So could the three of us take one of these on, you think? Could we no, catch this? God, no. God, no. Have you ever <laughs> seen two big horns? And so the Barbary seen. sheep is a... And a, a I think I... Did I say this or not? They're from Africa, but they've been introduced into North America. Anyway, they're they're like... They, they do the big like bighorn ram head clash thing. And there's a famous video of a Barbary uh, going against like a bighorn in North America somewhere. And it's just like, it's just the biggest battle of like big dick swinging sheep you've ever seen. Just these two (laughs) giant horned animals just going at each other full speed. Dude, we'd get, we'd get destroyed. I've recently learned that the, (laughs) that the rams and you know, the types of different horned sheep that do this have a spongy section of their skull that basically yeah, expands and that. contracts <laughs> so that it keeps them from the brain from rattling every time they're smashing heads together. Which is pretty cool. You were telling me yeah. about that, and I didn't know that, that they have, yeah, what is it? It's like the prefrontal lobe has sponge in it, basically, which acts right. as, you know, a football helmet for rams, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. A natural that's, football helmet. That's pretty hey, cool. question for you. Shoot. Do you guys have any appetite for a new game? Always. Always. It's my favorite part of the podcast. Would you games. say that you're, you're, you're a bit peckish for it, even? Indeed. <laughs> Very I'm not sure peckish. where this is going, right. but yes, so absolutely. Peckish. Well, Ratep had suggested to me, because he was like, you're always doing fucking math on shit. I'm always, I'm always doing math on the podcast. Crazy math. Yep. So, Will, I'm going to have Will join on camera here. We're going to play a new game Ooh. called... What's it called? Well, you called it Pat's Math, but I haven't been called Pat since I was 12 years old, so... We'll just call it the producer's math. <laughs> no, it's, it's Pat's called math. Pat's math. Yeah, That's Pat's math. fucking it ridiculous. It doesn't even <laughs> rhyme. It doesn't. It's Pat's math. All right, yeah, it's so Pat's here math. it's Pat's some... math. Ooh, I like that. And you have Ooh, do that voice. again. Yeah, one more time. It's one more time. Pat's math. <laughs> All right. Wow, that is <laughs> nice. I'm gonna that keep track. Nice. I'm gonna keep track of who gets the most points. It's whoever gets closest. We're not okay. doing prices right rules. That's stupid. Okay. So I did some calculations <laughs> based on things and behaviors from the animal kingdom. Okay. And extrapolated them out to human beings. So, first question. How many tacos from Taco Bell would Ratep have to eat to match the mammal that eats the most relative to its body weight each day? Are you going to give us any, like... <sighs> Anything to, to do that yeah, summation with so, so we know what the well, mammal is and well, what the tonnage you, is? You know that you've got a mammal. Yep. And that it eats a certain <laughs> amount relative to its body weight each day. So just picture, okay. like, yep, that makes what, sense. how many I, I, Taco Bell I tacos would Ratep yeah. have to eat. And then I'll give you all the pertinent All right, I got after. you. I got you. I'll go first. So one Taco Bell taco weighs approximately one quarter, no, one eighth of a pound. I'm making this up. I don't know. I've never been to Taco Bell because I'm not Ratep. Not never. It's just been a long time. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually point, uh, two, three, eight, six, repeating three pounds. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> let's uh, let, let's do this. Let's give it. Uh, let's go. Ratep's two hundred and ten pounds. A Taco Bell taco weighs a quarter of a pound, give or take a lot. Um, <laughs> quarter Ratep, pound taco. Ratep would have to eat five hundred tacos. Okay. Equaling. 
What did I say they weighed? A quarter pound? Quarter, quarter of a pound. So, right. That's so that, that'd tacos. be 125 pounds. That's yeah. 125 pounds. So that's, that is 45% approximately of Retef's body weight. Okay. No, wait. Okay. I said he's 200 pounds. God damn it. My math's terrible. That's, 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 that's 60% of Retef's body weight, give or tape, in Taco Bell. That's my answer. Right. Forrest says 500. Uh, uh, Will, you go next I'll without here. as many calculations. <laughs> I have a much more, I have a better reference for Taco Bell. The last time I went to Taco Bell, I, I walked through it after a wedding, walked through a drive through like a G in a fucking full suit. Uh, nice. I believe I believe a taco is one eighth of a pound. I'm going to say that it takes, I'm going to say that it's 2,000 tacos. Okay. Of Retef. Okay. How many tacos? But I mean, you got to think like this animal can't eat that much. I mean, could you? You couldn't eat two thousand tacos. I mean, what, what do you think? <clears throat> me? I could eat two thousand yeah. tacos easy. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Over the course of ten or fifteen years, the way no to look problem. at this is to think about. So this I don't know day. the answer to this, even as a biologist. What mammal eats the most in relation to its body weight? My guess is we're in the like sixty to seventy percent category. I don't know what the the mammal is, but even that would be huge. Like sixty percent would be a lot of your fucking body weight. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Return. I'm going. I'm going with Will on the, the a quarter pound taco is fucking ludicrous for us. That's there's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. For a dollar, by the way. No, I'm going with an eighth of a pound. And I weigh 485 pounds, so no. I out. weigh, I'm going to go 200. We'll say 200 because I'm on the air. Right. Uh, and mm -hmm. How many tacos? Oh, I, th I thought 200 was your guess. How many tacos? No, no. I'm going with 10,000 tacos. <sighs> okay. Wow. You think Will, someone's eating? Will gets the point for this one. So the pygmy shrew is the mammal that eats the most relative to body weight, eating 125% of its body weight every Whoa. single day. What? what? So, what, what weight that did you use for me? I, I asked I you how much you weighed. 125% of its body weight. Every day. So at 220 pounds, Retep would need to eat oh, it's 4,400 ounces of taco. <laughs> Each Taco Bell hard taco weighs 2.9 ounces, which means you would need to eat 1,517 tacos Jesus. every day to do what a pygmy shrew does. That's and I'll do it. I will quick, do it. Think quick throw to the, bro to the broologist for this. Yeah. Any thoughts on the pygmy shrew? Uh, I, I mean, think of that thing's metabolism. It's got to be pooping all day long. It's just got to be going in one side <laughs> in and out the out. other side. There is no just other like way that you can eat 125% of your body weight because it's, 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 <laughs> That thing's God, basically a, a tube. It's just food in one end, poop out the other end all day long. Are you There's talking no about me or the pygmy shrew? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All, right. all right. So Will gets the point. Number two. So after Retep ate his Taco Bell, let's just say that he farted, because he would, as loud <laughs> as the animal that makes the loudest sound relative to its body size. Okay? How far away would his fart be heard? I, I'm gonna. Can I, can I go first because I won the last round? Yeah, of yes. course. Okay, definitely gonna go with the howler monkey. Feels like that's an easy choice. It weighs yeah. like 18 pounds. You can hear it 10 miles away. Some shit like that. It feels like that's, that's the right the question. So, but yeah, but that's not the how question. How far away would Retep's fart be heard? Do the quick. Oh mind. my that's god. Okay. Okay. It would be heard a thousand miles away. A thousand miles will come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a hundred times. No, he's not, I guess, yeah. All right. 100, uh, whatever. Can you, <laughs> Forrest, yeah. since you chimed in, you're second. Yeah, I'll go next. I'll go next. Retep <laughs> weighs 225 pounds, acting as though it's 220. 200. What's going on his, here? It's 220. <laughs> fuck you. 485. His, his fart would be heard approximately 235 miles away. Okay. So Will has 100 miles. Forrest, 235. Retep. Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. It's been a long time. If you made a noise, it doesn't have to be a fart, but it's a fart in this case because you just ate 15,000 tacos. How far <laughs> away would it be heard if your noise uh -huh. was relative to body size the same as the animal that makes the loudest noise relative to its body size in the world? Okay. You're not going to have this... any good insights. Just say a number. 
<laughs> no, 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 I know. But this is, uh, we're, we're going to say, I'm going to just say uh, 750, 750 miles right. away. Well, Retep wins. Let me, let me run you through the math. So the Let's animal that makes That's the loudest math. sound relative to its body size is not the howler monkey. Forrest, do you have a guess? It's an insect, I'll tell you that. Mm. Um, probably a cricket of sorts, but I, I don't know. So it's a water, a bug that lives in water called a water boatman. Have you ever okay, heard of this Okay, I know what insect? a water boatman is, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just didn't a know water, they were super loud. Yeah, so a water boatman weighs 20 grams, and it makes a sound in which it rubs its genitalia across its abdomen, <laughs> producing a sound of 99 decibels, weighing only 20 oh grams. Oh, my God. Okay, wow. So if, if we, Retep weighs 99,000 grams... <laughs> so the sound of his fart would accordingly be 493,000 decibels, which is only theoretical. Now, let me tell you this. The loudest sound on they believe has ever been witnessed by humans was the 1883 <laughs> eruption of Krakatoa, which <laughs> sounded like a gunshot 3,000 miles away. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That sound, and also well, the- that sound traveled around the earth six times displacing the air was only wow. 310 decibels. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Recep's fart would theoretically what? kill every civic, every single living thing that wasn't underneath the ocean on Earth. It would wow. be so loud. I'm I a think big fan of Pat's math, by the way. This is, I'm it's, learning. It's math. Yeah, it's really I like fun. that I'm highlighted a lot. Uh, yeah. My weight, not so much. Well, but my fart would take out the entire fucking Milky Way, according yeah, it, to that. Wow. It would at least kill everything that wasn't deep under the ocean. <laughs> All right. And if you ate a thousand Taco Bell tacos, that might actually be accurate. <laughs> All right. Let's try all of this. I want to do all of it on air. Yeah. Let's say Forrest had a very large penis. Yeah. In okay. fact, it was we, so we, large. We know he doesn't. It's a lovely we've seen hypothetical. It. <laughs> yeah. It's so large that it is as long as the animal that has the longest penis relative to its body size on Earth. <laughs> How long would Forrest's penis be? Uh, Retep, you go first this time. Okay, so... <laughs> what is it? What, uh, how tall are you? Five, five foot four, Forrest? Yep, what are you, yep. five, five, right, five? right on. You've got <laughs> what are you, six foot? For real, yeah, six, six foot. foot? Yeah, six foot. Okay, so your penis... Th- this, this thing's penis... Your penis is 18 feet. If this okay. is the case. So he thinks there's long. an animal that's got a penis three times its body length. Correct. Uh, that's not Will, go second. I, I don't think that's possible. I'm going to go with it would be exactly six feet. I don't think anything has a penis that's longer than this body. And, yeah. and I'm not yeah. counting like a corkscrew dick of a duck that's like been on un- Pornhub. That's yeah. been well, pulled the, out like just that natural is a penis. Hang. That is a penis, so that was dumb. But I, I get what but. he's saying. He's saying natural hang, as in you don't you don't stretch it out. You go exactly. you go like full torque. Yeah. Got it. Just Man, I, for us, like, I yeah. didn't for say that, and I made the game. That's true. Is your theoretical penis? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. My my fantasy theoretical penis is um, man. I really liked Will's answer of the one to one body ratio. That's it. Just seems hard to have a penis longer than your body. <laughs> nice pun. That said, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> that said, chameleons, tongues, things like that. I'm thinking about. Okay, Forrest at six foot has a theoretical penis to match the world's <laughs> largest uh, penis animal to body ratio of. <laughs> Eight foot two inches. Wow. Okay. okay. I hate. To, I hate to say, Retep has won again. No what? way! I'm terrible. What is it? What is it? <sighs> so I hope it's three times body length. Exactly. Barnacles. Barnacles have the <laughs> longest penis on Earth because the barnacle does not Fuck move. The penis needs to travel from the male barnacle to oh, the female barnacle. It's all it's all dick. That that barnacle all is dick. all dick. I actually it's knew an this. Like a tape measure. Yep, I actually the, knew this. It, the the barnacle is literally all dick. God damn. It's just a penis with some some it's neurons. <laughs> and its penis is fifty times the length of its body, what? thus making forest penis three hundred feet long. I don't think you'd be very effective as a field no. biologist with no. that thing, or mobile, or oh, anything. Wow. I mean, that would be a terrible. That would be wow. awful. <laughs> Forrest, you have a boat that's probably covered in barnacles. You know barnacles have big dicks. I knew this. I knew this. I knew they were all dick. I remember making jokes about this in <laughs> biology classes. I, I don't know what is the matter with me. I should have known this. <laughs> all right. Shit. You guys want one or two more? I got two more. 
Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Here we go. I'm loving this game. Right. Yeah, it's a great game. If, if Wild Times Willie could jump as high as the animal that jumps highest relative to its own body height, how many jumps would it take him to reach the top of Mount Everest from the absolute bottom? <laughs> Mount Everest is 29,000 feet. Can we at least get a baseline on that? It's I, Mount Everest I, I is like 29,032 feet. Okay. 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 You're going to give us cool. a little bit of uh, of the story, probably. There's always three numbers, and we don't know anything about <laughs> yeah, any yeah. of them. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why it's nonsense. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, Forrest goes first on this one. How many yep, jumps would it take Will to get 29,000 feet if he Will's, could jump like Will's a... Six foot two, Mount Everest no, is 29,000. I'm, I'm six foot six. Just six foot six. six two. Two. In all what, fairness, out I, I knew he was taller than me. I didn't know he was six foot. I didn't know he was a gargantuan. In all fairness, I use, out an arbitrary six, number. I use six foot even as my math, so it's a little off. But yeah, let's that's pretend okay. he's six foot. Let's yeah. pretend Will's six foot. Um, God, he's going to do. Oh, man, that's a lot of jumps. He's going to do 580 jumps. Okay. Which still seems too low, but I've been I've been low on everything. So how how high is Mount Everest again? Twenty nine thousand feet. All right, six miles okay. almost. Six miles yeah, of jumping. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, hi. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say he's gonna do. He's gonna have to do eight hundred jumps. Okay. Will. All right. I got my number right here. I'm going on yeah. snow leopard. Three and a half feet tall, thirty-five foot jump. I'm six feet, so That's ten crazy. times my six. ten times my height is six thousand. So I'm saying it's going to require thirty-six hundred jumps. Okay. That's my bad, bad math right there, napkin math. It's not. It's not bad math. <laughs> That's not 30, bad bad math. No, thirty-six hundred jumps. That's perfectly good math. If that was the animal that we were basing <laughs> yeah. this behavior it's on, definitely not. Forest wins. He had the lowest number. A flea, a flea can jump 200 times higher uh, than its body oh length. Oh, my God. Which means Will would, in each jump, be hopping 1,200 feet, which means in just 24 quick hops, he would be at the top of Mount Everest. And with no damage to his ligament or knees. I knew oh I should have just said one. Could God, you imagine how cool that would be? I like, let's just, just say. for one second, let's just talk about the idea that... So, let's see, you said how many jumps? 24 Patrick? jumps. It would take 24 them jumps. So as in so and, and it's 6 miles. So in, in other words you're basically jumping a half a mile. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's like could you imagine? Like my commute yeah. to the gym would be incredible cuz it's it's I, like 2 miles from my house to the gym. I just hop. Just 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 pew, pew, of course. The gym. Yeah. Dude, I've always I've always over thought everything. Constantly. everything. Dude, I it's essentially flying. Else. It's essentially yeah. being having the ability to fly. Yeah, I, it might I always be cooler than flying. Like the fact that you actually have to hop, I think makes it cooler somehow. I always wanted my superpower to be like to be able to teleport, but but I would take this as as a close yeah, second. If I could jump like a flea, dude, that would open <laughs> things up for me. Yeah, a lot. how is there not a, a movie a superhero that does this yet? The, the probably tick. is. Is this the tick? tick? The blue, oh, yeah, the the tick. blue guy? I don't remember I love if he that cartoon or not. Yeah, I love that yeah. cartoon too. How does, it, uh, how does a flea generate that much force to be able to jump like that? It's not like they're very muscular. You know, they're so yeah. small. People will have to join the Patreon to find out. I was going to say, though. <laughs> or Google it. But, yeah, or Google, Google it. Or Google but it. I'd, I'd probably <laughs> still rather be the barnacle, just saying. <laughs> 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 Take measure right. cock. Yeah. This is uh this is the last one here. Uh also by the way, fleas, the the reason they're able to jump so high is they have an elastomeric protein called resilin that is super bouncy and bendy and stretchy and it allows cool. them to propel themselves. So last one. That's cool. Uh, I like that. That's so now we're cool. gonna go we did jumping, we did, you know, big cock. Now we're gonna jump to <laughs> strength, pure strength. <laughs> Let's say Forrest was as strong as the strongest animal relative to its body weight when it comes to carrying mm -hmm. shit, mm -hmm. right? How many fully grown female African elephants oh, could man. he just pick up at once and walk down the street with them? 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> a lot think, of math here, boys. It's not supposed to be easy. <laughs> yeah, no, oh I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of, Patrick put a lot of homework in this yeah, week. I'm did a you fan. spend all night fun. on this? Yeah. yeah. Well, you texted me the idea last night, and I was just drinking a beer in my garage after everyone went to bed, and I Doing was math. <laughs> now I have something to do. Is Forrest also 200 pounds? Like, what's Forrest is starting weight? I think we need to know that as a baseline. 350. Yep. I Wait, 200 pounds for Forrest. Yeah, okay. okay. There you go. It's a, it's a Which little might low. be a little, a little high, but... It, it's a little high, but it, that's okay. No, uh, not not I, from naked and afraid for us. Jungle <laughs> Bikini. I am female African elephants, fully yep. grown female African elephants. Look, I'm the only. I'm just <clears throat> thinking of like leaf cutter ants and other species of ant that just carry massive weights compared to body size. I'm gonna say that I could, I could carry, two hundred female African elephants. Okay, Peter. Um. I'm going to say that Forrest at a massive girth of 400 pounds, no, Sorry, 200, he uh, could carry mm, 1,250 female African elephants. That's a lot of elephants. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, that seems we like a lot. Carry. I'm going to go with the, what's that beetle that has like the fucking horns on it that's like crazy right strong? The horn beetle? beetle? Yeah, I'm going to go with rhinoceros beetle. I'm going with that math. Uh, I'm, yeah. say, I'm saying 1,000 on the die. Is that what you said for us? Uh, he said 200. Oh, right, yeah, 200. cool. 1,000 yeah. on the die. Ooh, me and Will are close, dude. Drum roll. Yeah. yeah. Forrest has won again. Nah, <laughs> fuck so, that. The rhinoceros beetle is correct, though, Will. Good call. Oh, nice. Uh, which will carry 850 times its body weight on Crazy. its back. Uh, 850 times. <laughs> so judging by that math, since a female African elephant will weigh about 6,000 pounds, Forrest would be able to carry 28 African elephants on his back <laughs> down the so street, so carrying 170,000 pounds. Uh, animals are cool. Humans are pretty garbage. We have good yeah, brains. Yeah, we really are it, just so soft. I mean, we got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? God, let's let's like. Can we just go on Amazon? Will, you're you're the computer guy. Go on Amazon, <laughs> order three CRISPR kits, four CRISPR kits right now. Get yeah. a rhinoceros beetle, a barnacle, um, a flea. A flea. And what was the other thing? I don't remember what the other thing was. Something the, else. Oh, the water boatman? Yeah, the, and water, the water boatman. boatman. And just, just, just make a cocktail of that. I Will and Peter, you guys are smarter than Patrick. I yeah. figured it out. I'll be the test dummy. Inject it right into my veins. I'll take it. <laughs> well, all right, quick, quick answers. If you could have one of those five superpowers, which one would you be? We know Retep would be able to eat the tacos. Nah, um, it's the flea, Avi, which I just said, mate. I'm, ah, man, I don't cool. know. No, I think the strength. I think I'd rather do the strength thing than the flea thing. I'm going uh, flea. I'm going flea. I want to be able to jump for like five jumps from here he, he, to like here's Florida. The thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> All right. Let me let me lay this out for you. Here's the hypothetical. Okay, <clears throat> you can jump like a flea, or you can have the strength of a rhinoceros beetle. There's no <laughs> hiding the jump like a flea. Do you know what I mean? True. You're a freak. You're, you're a, freak. a goddamn freak. You're not. You're not playing uh. in the NFL. You're not. You're nothing. Nothing. What? You're, you're what are you talking about? Straight. You're getting caught. What? You, no, you can, you can, you yeah. can, you can hide. You just you no just, way. There's no you, way. What but if you, you only would, jump at night? I, yeah, yeah, you, only you, jump. you just you don't jump in front of people. You, nah, you, come on, dude. You're getting caught. Yeah, There's no way. You're but not if you've caught. got the strength of a rhinoceros beetle, me at me at six foot shows up to to you know open tryouts at the NFL, and before you know it, I'm the starting lineman. You know, making well, millions of dollars. Zero question. You're Strong forgetting the competition. You you're it. forgetting the part where you would look like a rhinoceros beetle. So <laughs> no, no, you just have the power, that's not, that's the ability. Not the game. <laughs> that's yeah. not the game. You yeah, don't whatever. look like a flea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, just Forrest with the strength. Dude, I to might look take. Like a I might take the water boatman, honestly, because I would <laughs> then have. I would then have the power to just rub my genitals against my abdomen <laughs> and kill every living thing. <laughs> could so imagine? I could just be like. Everyone in the world has to give me half their money or I'm going to kill the world. I could also just see, I've been on enough shoots with Patrick where he loses his cool and we're like on a shoot and the fixers like fucked everything up and there's no coffee and you look over. Patrick's got his pants around his ankle and he's just <laughs> rubbing his dick against his tummy and he's like, you better bring me my fucking coffee. <laughs> and he just screeches and the guy just fucking explodes and it's like, oh, it's pissed yeah. off Pat again. I told you, he's going to rub one, his dude. dick on his tummy if you do that. 
Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's I'm a good thing barnacles out. don't have that ability. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who would win in a fight either with, with which superpower. What's it, which superpower here? They're, oh, they're all fantastic. The animal kingdom's <laughs> full of amazing shit. Yeah. Listen, if you like Pat's math, that's not my name, but if you like it, <laughs> let us know. Please let us know in the comments. Pop a like on the YouTube. Leave a comment on iTunes. If you're bored and miserable about this segment, let us know that too. No, nobody's going to hate this. I love this yeah. segment. If you hate this awesome. segment, you're, you're what's wrong with America, okay? Because this is a good <laughs> segment. <laughs> but keep I'm listening, gonna, And I'm going to keep a running tally, by the way, too, so that we can... The first one to ten wins. I like <laughs> it. God, that was yeah. fun. This is fun. I like playing these games. I, I've been out yeah. on a boat with no access to news and not caught up on anything. So let's play another game. What else, what else, what else we got in the game department? We, so we played a game last week. Uh, which was real fun while you were out of town with me, Pat, and Will. Okay. And uh, we basically picked our top three uh, plus our least favorite French fry. And uh, <laughs> okay, okay, and very people, important stuff. Real, real important. quick, what was the overall worst French fry? Was there was there a unanimous wedge, winner? Wedge steak fry, yeah, wedge, yeah. wedge wedges, fry. yeah, wedges are garbage. It's just a baked potato. <laughs> and I think it's a French Legit. fry. They're fucking yeah. horrible. Forrest yeah. has FOMO. Wait, real quick. The- Will Will brought up last week one of his best fries is he says, you know, a hand cut curly fry, like when you go to a farm and they serve that. <laughs> What? <laughs> I've never been to a That's farm and got said. a curly fry in my life. None of that adds up. <laughs> All right. Garbage. So, uh, so this what do you want to do for top three in DFL this week? Uh, top three in DFL, we're going to do alcoholic drinks. Mm. I know what Forrest That's number it. one simple. is. Yeah, you do. You do indeed. <laughs> uh, okay, alcoholic that, beverages. That's it. so it's all very types simple. included. Uh, Who types? I already uh, know mine. Yep, I got mine. Are you, are you are you doing math or are you writing down your alcoholic beverages? <laughs> I'm, writing, I'm writing them down. I know my. Okay, three. make sure make sure you put the pen down after you're done. I fuck, okay. I've probably been clicking it. Well, we don't yeah, know. I bet Nobody you knows. So yeah, it's gonna be just your your top three uh, alcoholic beverages, and then just y- your y- the worst one. Okay, I can go. I know mine. Yeah, it's easy for me. Ahead. Three, two, Number one, one favorites, and then you're dead fucking last. Three, two, one, favorites. Okay, gotcha. Uh, number three, hard to beat. I'm going to be called a real basic bitch for this. Don't care. A fantastic pina colada, incredible. Ooh. Like, a good pina colada, yeah. it's so hard to beat. It's it's insane. Um, it, it's, it's just an okay. adult milkshake. I don't care who you are. Number two, <laughs> I don't. I don't, because that's what it is. Number mm-hmm. two, favorite drink is a perfect old-fashioned you get a good old fashioned. It's, I mean, a bad old fashioned is just awful, but a good old fashioned, it's one of my go tos. Second only to the number one drink on planet Earth, regardless of who you are. If you disagree, just get out. Gin and tonic. <laughs> it's the best drink ever invented. I can drink them all day, all night. There's nothing better. It's basically water. That is my top three. And then do I say my DFL or do we circle back yeah. for DFL? Yeah, what's your, <laughs> what's your dead fucking last? Oh, anything with vodka. Like, why, why vodka? Why does vodka even exist? Just straight vodka. Nah. It's just disgusting. It's like, vodka is garbage. I'm yeah, going to go I'm gonna go next because off the heels of that, uh, that's ridiculous. Vodka is delicious. <laughs> yeah, vodka is such you. a utility player, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, but it just tastes like nothing. And, and, and if you're well, not a sorority girl, you should never drink it. End of that's discussion. That's fucking absurd. Uh, I, I will say that gin and tonics are disgusting and no. a lot of calories. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> tipped his chair over. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in my top three. Number three is a straight up vodka and soda oh. with a splash oh, of some on. type of fruit drink. Oh come on, you're just doing that drink. because I said how disgusting Not, it is. No, that, it's, was, my, I that was my number four. That's uh, my constantly four. I drink yeah. it. I, it's what I drink. It's low-cal. It's, it's delicious. You can drink a thousand of them. Uh, number two, uh, I'm going to go with just a straight-up Moscow Mule. Mm, mm. It's a delicious it's a good drink. drink. It's a good so drink. Good. It has vodka in it for us. It has vodka. <laughs> it, it does. It does. And it's a good drink. But just for straight those, vodka was my answer for Dill. Uh, we have a lot of Australian listeners. I don't know if they drink them down there. It's vodka 
a little bit of soda and ginger beer, and it is delightful. You can yeah, drink 20 of them. Yeah. Drink it at a pool. <laughs> and Do it. It's served oh, yeah. in a copper mug, which keeps yep. it colder longer. It's, all, it's always yeah. cold, and it's always hot out. Yeah, no, it's a good drink. Yeah. It's a good drink, yeah. Good call. Now, my number three is probably going to be controversial because you two like to kiss wait, your asses. Wait, number three or number – wait, wait. My number one. Three, my, two, one? Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I, uh, is this a ranking? I don't know. Anyways, yes. my number one is a – Pat, I will kill you. You are Learn the ugliest. Learn the rules of our games. When, you when still don't you, know how they work. You don't When you make things. anything but a smile, you are hideous. Uh, okay. My number <laughs> one. Top yeah. My top favorite is a straight up Caucasian. A white Russian. It's delicious. A white it, Russian. That's right. Or also known as a Caucasian. You may have seen it in the Big Lebowski fantastic movie. He drinks them constantly. It consists of Kahlua, cream, and again, vodka. Only and you it, would pick a milk drink as your number you one You picked drink. a pina colada. Your, 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 your one will go to the Pina coladas. Are you yeah. kidding me? You're calling you the me McDoyles a sorority from chick? You picked a yeah. fucking pina colada. It's bro, coconut. you're drinking a, a pina milk pina drink. Nice. You're broken. Pina, pina coladas are delicious. Real quick side story before we hear Patrick. <laughs> I'll never drink white <laughs> Russians gotta... again because one time I was gambling at a really, really shitty casino far outside of Las Vegas before going on the Blackwater Canyon. Drank about eight white Russians. Followed that no, up by it's... drinking something else that I don't remember what it was, it all coagulated in my stomach and I puked up a ball of white stuff. Not joking. Literally, that's it was like this round, lumpy thing that came out. Because was, you uh, had a bad experience well, that's and you made so. bad choices in life, it has nothing to do with the actual What's flavor your of the delicious Peter? drink. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, it's a gin and tonic. Fuck oh, off. Oh, come on. Course. Get the fuck out of here. You're just being negative for no reason. It's the best I'm drink not. in the world. It coagulates my shit after... I'll, uh, and I'll and never and serve yeah. you alcohol at my house ever again. Coagulate. Ever. Well, I have one of yours on my list, Peter, um, but you're not going to like where it is. It's a gin. Right. For, me, for me, number three is a Jack and Coke. Now, it's a bit fratty. Good. It's a bit childish. It's solid. I don't have them often, but when I do... I, I'm like, these are the best. This, it, they're so tasty. They're refreshing. You get the Isn't carbonation. Yeah. I love Jack and Jack and Coke I or Jack too. and Diet Coke? No, I do too. It cuts down Diet. the sweetness of the Coke to make it tastier. It's like, it's, it's really good. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Number two, because uh, I was thinking in, in terms of I need, I need one thing that's like, I can't live without it. I need it. Like, I would actually rather kill myself than not have this available, <laughs> which is red wine. I'm going to go specific. I uh, knew you a had nice to pick wine. Chilled Cabernet Sauvignon. It, it just makes food taste so much better. It makes the meal experience more fun. You know, I pretty much have a glass of wine every night. Oh, would it be yeah, chilled? Pe people, yeah, I, I always keep, I keep my red wine cold, which people think is weird. Oof. And then no, yeah, number one. Ridiculous. My number one favorite drink. I associate it with Vegas because whenever okay. I go to Vegas, I drink these. A Harvey <laughs> Wallbanger. What is <laughs> it a Harvey Wallbanger? I don't know if I know what that tastes like. So here's what it is. It's basically a screwdriver. Okay. So okay. you're starting with vodka and orange juice. But then you put in, I like more of this. Some people say half a shot. Some people say full shot of Galliano. Mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. uh, black licorice flavored uh, liqueur mm -hmm. that cuts through the sweetness of the screwdriver and just gives it this, oh my God, dude, Harvey wall bangers are so good. They're so refreshing. The oh, problem with them- Salivating a little bit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know what? When we do the video reviews at my house, that's what we're drinking. Let's. I'm um, for it. Okay. I you like don't it. often find Galliano, which is unfortunate. A lot of bars don't have them. DFL white Russian. That's fucking gross. You're it is gross. gross. Yeah, both mean, milk drink should not drinking. be your number one. Yeah, S you sip, on a, sip on a fucking milk. gin and tonic, <laughs> tonic water. It's poison. F off. <laughs> it's, it's, actually, poison. it's actually medicine, you idiot. It's cream, by the way, you moron. It's not milk. Even, and even say it grosser. right, milk. It's more even gross. Better. How about, Grosser's how about, not how about a I, word. Learn English. Should, should I melt some <laughs> butter and dump some uh, grain alcohol into it? Would you like that? Yeah, how about tasty. I melt some cheddar How many cheese? pina coladas are you drinking, mate? How many of those are you going to have? I'm talking I about had, having I one delicious cocktail. I had three cocktail. the day before yesterday before getting Was on your shit coagulated? <laughs> you still learning what that word means and how to pronounce it, and it wasn't. I felt <laughs> great for a while how and then not you? very good. How dare you, sir? <laughs> well, You're the well, one with bad English. When you went to the farm where they served you these hand-cut curly fries, did they also milk the cow and give you a, a fresh white Russian? 
One hundred percent, yes. It, okay. Not by Russian, but they did think of his milk, though. It was a field trip. When did I was this like, happen? I was about eight years old, so maybe like. Were you sleeping? Were you sleeping when this happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there an uncle with bad touch there, Will? Um, <laughs> a field trip. <laughs> wow. I cannot yeah. believe anybody, any any normal human would pick a white Russian. I like. I will still drink a white Russian, but it should not be anybody's favorite drink. Like that's just you're yuck. Like it's, it's gross. Here's what we'll do. Yeah. Here's, here's you're what I think gross. we should do. You're both right, gross. Here's what we're gonna do. You can both all, suck. We a are fat definitely one. gonna get together before uh, before too long in the next week or two. Yep. Uh, in the backyard, we're gonna do the hot tub. We're gonna do the v- video reviews. We're gonna post them. It's gonna be fun. I think everyone should bring the ingredients for their favorite drink. Hundred percent. We make them, and we'll have one of each. I or literally just looked back each. at my bar to see what kind of gins I had currently. So I'm I'm bring I'm a nice one. Yeah, I think it's great. Really yeah. Yep. Bring some. I'm gonna bring some nice gin. I've got these uh, these caviar limes growing at my house, which are limes in like little bubbles that you put. Oh, I'm gonna bring some fresh mint. You guys are never gonna Ooh. drink anything ever again. Yeah, I'm boy. literally gonna bring a Modelo. Cheers, mates. <laughs> <laughs> no, you will bring all the makings of White Russian, including you have to, Yeah, right. You guys will not be fucking having, tasting the deliciousness that is a White Russian at that event. You, I'll bring you enough have for to one, bring it. me. Bring a fancy White Russian, and I'll drink it. And I'll tell yeah. you that it's a good to <clears throat> mediocre drink, but nobody should call I'm gonna it I'm going to bring favorite. you a 40-ounce container of White Russian that you <laughs> must collect a lot. Grossners, weigh in. Let us know if we missed something obvious or if you think Retep's an idiot. Or both. Okay. Oh, um, nice dead air. Not Nice segue. Were you waiting for me to say air. something? That was, that was oh, funny. Oh, fuck no. off. Pat, you are you are a monster. Hey, Forrest, <laughs> I got to say, I, I missed you last week trying to hold it down with just this fucking negative Nancy was, was yeah. tough. It wasn't negative at all. I was, I was <laughs> happy. I was fantastic. How much sourness was going on last week? Was he in a particular mood or, or was he pretty good? He's always in a mood, dude. That's Look true. Out. Are you guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, everybody's always in a mood. Oh, fucking wait, morons. Wait, wait a minute. Forrest, I hear your phone ringing. Oh, pardon me. Hello. Good night, <laughs> mate. Uh, hello, who is this? Uh, it's Neil Watts's Mate. Oh, hey, Neil, my favorite guy. How are you, buddy? <laughs> well, I was better before you slagged me off online, mate. <laughs> Does that mean <laughs> J-O you? So, yeah, okay, sure, right on. Ah, uh, yeah, hope, hope you and Nick Mooney are having fun somewhere, playing hacky sack and all that. Yep. Oh, this is, this is a negative call. All right, yeah, this is not going well. Please continue. Anyway, I wanted to tell you, mate, that I think it's time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Neil. Battle Royale! <laughs> and then I hang up the phone. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Can we just reenact every an actual battle? Call We're just going to cut that into every single every single episode from now on. I was yeah. for that. I was a big fan of that. Um, <laughs> that was good. What do we got? Yeah, that was <laughs> You're back. Why don't you pick one of the battle royales that are yeah, submitted okay. by Brosners? Okay. Yeah, this is a fun one. Will came up with this one. It's very okay. weird. It's out there. I'm for it. Um, here's the scenario, okay? You can grow any animal meat from a lab, and you're the head okay. chef of the first 100% cruelty-free exotic animal restaurant, okay? So it's Can lab meat, it? you're the head chef, Michelin restaurant, you know, top-notch, and you, your guests order, while they wait for their food, they go on a VR safari, right? So they're like, I all right, this. I'm gonna have myself a nice zebra steak, I'll put on my VR goggles, go on safari. Half of the money that they spend at this very expensive, uh, cruelty-free, exotic animal meat restaurant. Experience. Experience. Yeah. Not just a restaurant. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, a big to-do. It's, it's kind of the opposite of Ted Nugent's Kill and Grill. Um, right. <laughs> half of their money eat. goes to, to animal conservation. The mm-hmm. question here is, like Mr. This. Michelin Chef, what are you serving for an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert? All animal products, all lab grown. Let's go. Cruelty free. You're not killing anything. Correct. It's an opportunity to taste things that you may not otherwise be able to taste. Pat, Pat shut up. Now, VR is this experience. a snake draft or is this a regular? Are we just going snake draft, in a circle? Snake draft. And here's how we're going to do it. It's going to be a little bit different tonight. We're going to go snake draft. Everybody's going to do their appetizer. 
then main course, then dessert. Okay. Appetizer, is, main course, dessert. Okay. Yep. All right, who wants to who wants to start the song? Let's, can Forrest go first, please? <laughs> <laughs> while you gag, while you Google, I can coagulate. I can go first. All right, yeah, you got it. So, I've had the fortunate luxury of eating a lot of Africa's game growing up, being on safari all the time, mm-hmm. and for my oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I should save that for my main course. For my appetizer, all that being said. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, my God. I had to think about it. I, I, it threw me for a curve. That's fine. I've got it. It's, it's not a problem. No question. Keep in mind, this is all lab-grown meat, which mm-hmm. means you can have it any size you like, right? If it's grown in a lab, it doesn't have to conform to the size oh, of yeah. It'll be currently more known. Yeah. Of course it will, but it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to conform to the size of currently known foods, animal <laughs> foods, because it's lab-grown. So okay. my first appetizer, something Stink beetle. Magnifique, <laughs> delicious. You guys are going to be like, wow, what a cop out. I can buy that today. But you can't buy it the size of your head, which is how I would serve my thinly sliced, deep water, cold water scallop. Okay. Appetizer, ah. lab okay. grown. Imagine a scallop the size of a basketball sliced yeah. perfectly in the middle, a sheet giant of scallop meat. It's so good. It would be raw. You'd have a garnish of lemon to squeeze on top of it. Mwah, mm-hmm. Magnifique. A little salt, okay. maybe. A little salt and pepper off the table. Of course. Yep. All right. I'll go next. I'm going to do my appetizer as well. I want to serve something delicious, something rare, and something that the VR experience is going to be second to none, right? Mm, okay. So I'm going to transport my uh, restaurant uh, patrons to the deep, <laughs> deep, deep sea, the deepest parts of the ocean where the angler fish resides. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to the fucking bottom of the Mariana Trench in their VR experience. They will okay. have an anglerfish crudo uh, made from the animal that has that little thing that comes off and creates its own flashlight. They're going <laughs> to the explore the fish. Mariana Trench and then have a lovely crudo of anglerfish. Mm, I didn't think of the VR experience. That was a good point there. Yeah, okay. Very nice, very nice. Angler All right, fish what's up? Appetizer and main. Okay. So my appetizer will will be a uh, deliciously oh deli- everybody when they go and they buy this it's infuriating okay it's it's a common thing it's available everywhere but it's fucking infuriating and Forrest made a good point that it could be any size I am going to have a wok filled bowl of just pure oyster. <laughs> It's just going to be dying. Kind of copying what I did there, but okay. Yeah, except it's a fucking oyster, and and you got to pay $5 million for to eat oysters anytime in real life. So that is true. I like so I there's like a what difference Patrick there. did. Yeah, it's, this is all about the experience. Forrest, nobody cares. Really Shut up. up. My on next, one. my okay. next Thank one, you. my next rude. one will be my main course, and since this is. A uh, you know this is fantasy. We can grow yeah. this in a lab, and the VR experience is going to be on point because I will be having, or my guests will be having a delicious sliced human meal. Oh my god, Rattap <laughs> freak! <laughs> and you know what? The VR experience will allow you to hunt said human and uh, humanely I kill like it. How you However, just said you- sliced human, not like a nice. <laughs> A nice medium rare human rump steak, or or you know like nothing, just sliced, sliced human, sliced forest galante slice rump. That's quite like something. A, like ground chuck. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. A giant wok bowl filled with just the innards of an oyster. An oyster. <laughs> your meal, sir, the- sounds revolting. <laughs> <laughs> and your VR experience is very odd. Yeah, He's going to basically be serving <laughs> barnacle in person. So yeah. you okay. can find down at the pier. Uh, so, <laughs> delicious, again, delicious. Again, mine's about the experience, my restaurant. Yeah, and smart. so I have always wanted to see one particular animal that I will most likely never see in my whole life. I've tried mm-hmm. to pitch shows where we do expeditions to look for it. No one ever buys them because they don't think we'll find it. I okay. want to see the giant squid. The giant... There you go colossal squid, the one that the Kraken legends are made around. So 
In my experience, you will go down there and then you will be served. You will see giant squid. You will swim among them. They'll be fighting sperm whales. You'll see those mm. battles as if you were scuba diving in clear water. Uh, I mean, if you even want to take the headset off to eat your meal, you'll be served a squ lovely squid risotto with hints of lemon, fresh it's parsley, nice. some capers nice. for some for nice salt and brine. It's um, better than sliced it's, human, all right, Retap? <laughs> sliced human and common barnacle. Uh, that's right. That's my common main barnacle? dish, a squid These risotto. are fucking delicious oysters. Fuck off. All yeah, right. that's very nice. Right, Forrest, that's very nice. You're up for your yeah. main course and your dessert. Yep. Yep. Uh, hold on. I'm making do notes. better for us. Your I, I appetizer to, yeah, was garbage. I, I went soft in the I'm in the lead so far. Come on, yeah, do better. Well, for sure. Yeah, you're definitely winning. Um, Can swim in my walk. <laughs> yeah. Oysters. Okay. Meat. All right. Very good. Very easy. Very easy. Um, mm -hmm. For my main course, it's a meat that I personally know is more delicious than anything I've ever had the luxury of tasting. But before you get to find out what that is, you put on your VR helmet and you get to experience a wild. African safari, unlike anything that anybody is able to do anymore. Africa as it truly once was. You walk through the bush. You're in Africa back in the day. You're wearing a pith helmet. You got short cocky shorts. You got your <laughs> giant rifle. And you're going out there and you're trekking through sub-Saharan Africa before you have to VR style dispatch an eland, which you then Ooh. get to eat. Eland meat. Absolutely incredible. Served medium rare. <clears throat> Delicious. Okay. Tell me about nice an eland steak. real quick. It's kind of like a deer, right? Yeah, it's it's a giant antelope. Um, they're they're almost the size of a moose. Big big animal. Will maybe you can pull up a picture. Um, they are they are hunted in Africa for meat. I mean they're. It's the best meat I've ever had. When I was when I was like in my early twenties, I was convinced that the only way I was going to get really rich was to make an eland farm because if anybody tasted it, they would be convinced that it's so much better than cow. Um, they eat both leaves and grass, so they're better for the environment. You know, they're not just grazers, and they're just—I mean—they're just stunning animals. They're beautiful. They're pretty. They're huge. They're much larger than a cow. There's Whoa. one right there, Look at that and. Thing. It's, it's honestly, I, when, when I took some of the guys to Africa on one of our shoots, everybody said it was the best meat they'd ever eaten. And that was without me prompting them. So I was so glad to hear that it wasn't just in my head. It really is the most delicious steak on earth. Our field producer, Justin, when he got back, because uh, I wasn't on the shoot in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. I said, how'd it go? And he's like, the, the eland. The eland meat. <laughs> I mean, it was the best steak I've ever tasted. It's not even close. It was the first thing he said. I was like, no, no, how did the fucking shoot go, idiot? <laughs> wow. So you're just That's, a dick to everybody, huh? Yeah, of course. Especially Jason. Okay. He needs it. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. What's your dessert for us? That sounds fun. Right. Quickly. That is next. Let's that wrap is this next. up. I'm sorry. This is very difficult <clears throat> coming up with an animal lab meat dessert, okay? It's definitely not, not a white simple. Russian. I can tell you that much. Um, is it a pina colada? <laughs> Let's go. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. What do you serve for dessert? Um, hmm, Jesus Christ. This is hard. Okay, I know. I know. I know. So, for your final meal, you put on your yep. VR helmet, and before you know it, you're shrunken down into the tiny world of insects. It's this very fascinating. Everything seems huge and gigantic and cool and scary. You have the VR strength of an ant you can lift things and you join the colony and you head into the hive and you see millions of worker ants and termites and you see the queen and all her big gross throbbingness and everything that goes on in an ant hive and then you come out great for a dessert can you just shut up and listen because you know nothing a throbbing queen you know sounds nothing. delicious and yeah, then you come out meal of your this. vr experience and on mm -hmm, your plate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a giant gelatinous meal that tastes like a lemon drop. Think a giant bowl of lemon drop jelly, and that is, is that is ant meat. Because this if you've ever disgusting. eaten ants, they Ooh. taste like lemon drops. So it is a grown ant in a lab. Uh. It's gelatinous and goopy, but it's delicious with a spoon. And it's uh, you get a bowl of ant, and it tastes like a lemon drop. That's Ebola a real thing. Ant? Wait, is it is it Ebola no, you, ant? It's no, a, a bowl, bowl of ant. ant. You had walks of everything. You had a walk of human. A walk of oyster meat. <laughs> yeah. Well, and human, sliced human. 
here, okay. while Forrest has no chance of beating me, I do appreciate that he worked in some knowledge that the ant tastes like lemon, which is kind of, I don't think most people know that. Nope. So it was a dog you had, to think of. After Terrible you've had joke. the anglerfish crudo and the squid risotto, explored the Mariana Trench, done all that, you're going to put on your VR headset mm -hmm. and you'll be transported mm -hmm. to a remote island where you're exploring freely in the forests, you're looking, you're surrounded by ocean, you're on Arapawa Island, which is about 40 miles off the coast of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. They don't allow a lot of tourism there. Uh, it's very protected because they have a lot of interesting species, including the Arapawa goat. So as you okay. explore and frolic freely in the VR, you will be served a tres leches cake, a very <sighs> light, airy cake that I love uh, from Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Made with Whoa. Arapawa goat milk. So much. That's very snazzy. I'm I'm for it. Why I, why are uh, you against that, Ritep? Seriously, I'm curious. I'm against what? both of you. See, it's That's just this, uh, Forrest. You're just kissing his what? ass. Pat's been googling, that looking up actual delicious. recipes, and I'm just sorry replacing it with trying. exotic meats. You've never had a trace leches cake. <clears throat> nobody has, mate, and nobody who listens to this podcast even knows what that means. Uh, there's, it's you, a fairly you're literally the dessert. only person who hasn't had a trace. Are you like done? This Is it my case? turn? Yeah. Can I finish? Yeah, yeah. Hur yes. hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> my final VR experience, and I'm pissed because Forrest took my idea somehow. You will Smarter. be shrunken down, much like in the old cartoon, The Magic School Bus, and you will enter into. Pat's mouth, and oh <laughs> you Her will. Here comes herpes as a dessert. Don't step on my fucking dessert, yep, I knew you it. stupid <laughs> ant, gelatinous, lemon tasting sniff fuck. What's that? It's just a bunch of Z's because I'm snoozing. <laughs> you will go down his esophagus. He won't know because oh, you'll be so tiny, and you will float down into his body with a net, and you <laughs> you will be. Capturing whichever viruses infect his body, from AIDS to herpes to <laughs> gonorrhea, and you will put them into a nice container. You will come back out of the experience, and your AIDS, gonorrhea, herpes will be sprinkled on a delicious platter of vanilla ice cream. Thank you. <laughs> do they have a flavor, do we think? <laughs> yeah. For us. Do viruses Delicious. have a flavor? Uh, that's that's to, slightly outside of my wheelhouse. You should know. I mean, that's just, they're inside of you, mate. None of you that made. Uh, so, Ritev, let me just get this straight. And this is the recap for anybody that wants to weigh in on iTunes or, or YouTube or anywhere else that you listen. Ritev, your meal, so I'm clear, mm -hmm. is the thing that literally every food critic says is disgusting, which is a large oyster. And you're talking about one the size of a wok because small oysters are I'm talking about a bowl of refined. oyster meat. Yeah, so so a mm. wok-sized mm -hmm. oyster, nasty. and then if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't have to be necessarily just one oyster. It could be a, a collection. Okay, whatever sure tastes okay. the best, that mate. But but oyster, second though. up, yeah. you have Pat, sliced shut your human. fucking mouth. No description, just sliced human. Delicious correct? butter. Yeah, I mean, delicious you could put butter, salt okay. on there. It's and then tasty. your third, your, it's actually your, your, sliced forest roast rump. Okay, very. And nice. And don't forget about my VR experience with yes. the human. You get to yeah. hunt said human, whichever one you want. And have a sliced version of them on your plate. Okay, that's something. And then your dessert is vanilla ice cream sprinkled with Pat's stomach viruses. That's correct? Well, no, his gen genital viruses. So genital her viruses. Okay. Herpes, okay. And that okay. got a real You definitely need a restaurant for that. So if that sounds good to you, vote for Ritep. What's right. next, Forrest? Uh, yeah, if, if you don't want to eat any of that, you could do Patrick's <laughs> VR-heavy restaurant which takes yeah. you to the bottom of the ocean to have an angelfish crudo. <laughs> uh, anglerfish, not angelfish, excuse me. Second up. Oh, come on. You continue in the ocean to have a, uh, a jumbo, was it a giant squid risotto? Is that what you said? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Followed by uh, some rare goat that I've never heard of, Trace Leches cake. Is that correct? Yep. That is correct. Yep. Trace okay. Leches great. cake. Yeah. It sounds does. cohesive. It does. It, it, it does sound cohesive. Giant squid. Has anybody I, ever I, eaten a giant squid? Nobody knows. And my meal, and because I'm an idiot and didn't fully understand the, uh, <laughs> the, the game the when game. we began, was a giant scallop, 
to begin with, and scallops are delicious, but the VR experience would be trash. Um, and then going on a very old school African safari with a pith helmet and khaki shorts and uh, euthanizing an eland to eat medium rare. And then a giant bowl of ant jelly, which would taste like lemon drops because ants disgusting. actually taste like lemon. And I, oh yeah, that's, that's disgusting, but ice cream with genital warts isn't, or whatever you say. I never um, said genital warts. Very strange. Whatever. So that's Very that's nice. the battle royale tonight. It it definitely got a little derailed. I'm for it though. No, it was Give us a vote. Give us a vote. Let us know whose restaurant you'd eat at. Um, yeah. What else? Oh, that's now you guys it. want me to do something. Now you yeah, want me to do it. something. Do, do the thing. Yeah. Do the, do the, do go. the wrap vote up in thing. the comments. Yeah. Vote. I'm gonna try and put a poll up on the YouTube channel in the uh, thing. I'll post a link. Mm-hmm. Go to the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info for the links to everything. Uh, the Patreon will be up next week or two. There's gonna be some shit in there and uh, extra podcasts. And yeah, we love you. Hey, Peter. Shut up. Is your is what? your dad Jeff Bridges? No. My dad's okay. dead. Fuck off. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>